and we're live hello everybody hi, hi guys hello. so we obviously today are joined by the lovely debbie Simontelli, but you probably have also realized this is not tom i'm, I'm not tom <laughs> <laughs> So for those of you who don't know, this is Carol. Carol's our head of customer support here at Design Cuts. Some of you probably do know Carol because she's like the longest standing member of the team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but she you may not have met her yet. So this is Carol and obviously this is Debbie. So a good shout out to everyone who's joined us live on the call. We've got 26 people with us at the moment. Uh, the numbers do tend to build up as the call goes on as well. So there might be some late later starters and a lot of people obviously tend to watch this on the replay as well so whilst they might not be live now they could yeah. be loads of other people watching this at some point so lots of hellos yeah. to you both there in the in the comments hi paul hi <laughs> and uh, someone from texas dana from texas. Texas. yeah Yay, texas <laughs> <laughs> my texas peeps showing up <laughs> did you tell everybody why Tom's not here today? No, so I don't know if you guys know, you probably might have seen it on social media, but Tom and our creative director, Matt, are actually at Creative South in the US. So they left yesterday. Yesterday, yeah, and lunchtime UK time. They're so. there until next Monday. Like um, next, just, yeah, they leave Sunday US time. Um, they're actually going to be taking over our Instagram story as well. So they are. Oh. They've the told site. us to leave Instagram alone and leave it to them. So <laughs> we'll see what they put on there. <laughs> very cool. So oh, I'm going to very, too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna do a very quick shout out to the names that I can see on the call. Uh, we've got Angela, Laura, Mr, Heather, Dana, Tracy, Paul, Alf, Janet, Biggie, Jay. Carmela, Lisa, Sonia, Dana, Jesse, Amy, Nina. Wow. Two pages, wow. guys. So I'm not going to keep going. So, Debbie, for those of the, the people on the call who don't know you or perhaps haven't sort of seen you around for a while, just introduce yourself. Let us know who you are and what you do. Okay. So, um, Debbie Sementelli, I am a lettering artist and a font designer. And um, I've been doing this a very long time. Um, and I also have started in the last 10 years to teach brush lettering. So I do brush lettering classes on Skillshare. And I also do Adobe, um, Mac, Adobe Max um, brush lettering workshops with Laura Worthington there, which is always fun. <laughs> I've done workshops for TypeCon. So, private groups, pretty much wherever anyone will have me. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm there because I love to share my love of the brush. Um, and it's just been a wild ride. And I'm still learning because now I'm just learning Procreate. So this is pretty cool and exciting. But I kind of relate back to what it's like to be a beginner. Yeah. Because it's a totally different tool. And um, so, that's why the, what I'm going to talk about today, I'm going to cover fundamentals because no matter what you do, if you have the fundamentals down, then all the other tools become easier to learn how to use. So that's primarily. Um, and I have some stuff on my, some of my work on my PowerPoint. Would you like me to share that now? Yeah, so I'm just, I was just going to say, um, hello, Jess, by the way, Jessica from Creates Couture, I believe that is in the chat yeah. from last week. So, hey, Jess, thanks oh, for joining hi, us this Jess. week. Um, oh, hi. That's my kind of thought now. What was I going to say? From France. Ooh. Um, Debbie was saying about her PowerPoint. Um, I'm just going to answer. Oh. Angela's come in with a question. Uh, Angela, yes, they do have t shirts that have barcodes on. So, if anybody is in Creative Site who does happen to be watching this, uh, you can go up and scan. Tom oh, and my bags. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's fantastic. <laughs> um, I, oh, that so say, cool. I was going to say, if there's anyone in the chat who remembers, how long ago now did we have Debbie with us? Uh, so I double checked this. It was nearly two years ago, July 2017, you were over to us. So Debbie yeah. came and visited us here in the office at DC. You actually and missed I it. wasn't <laughs> here, I missed it because I was I on the there, right? Um, but um, Debbie did a workshop with the team here and we streamed it on Facebook live. Yeah. So if any of you here were watching that, let us know in the comments. That'd yeah, be really definitely. cool, because you would have seen it before I did. Um, yeah. so that's amazing. So let us know if you saw that. And uh, as Debbie's mentioned, she's gonna go through some really, really helpful bits today. 
Um, so pens and papers at the ready. And if you want to share your screen, Debbie, we can get into okay. it. Okay. All right. And they probably also noticed that we do have another screen today, uh, which is Debbie's iPad, and she's going to show us some hand-drawn bits as well. So that's a little sneak peek for you. You probably wondered what is that and why is there another screen there. <laughs> so that will be coming a little bit later on. Okay, so, so are we good? Yes. Okay, so this is just, I like to ask people what their happy place is. It's just something that I find interesting. So I wanted to share, first of all, my happy place. So it's in my studio, which is up here. <laughs> and with all of my markers and brushes and pen, that's just a slight uh, number of what I have. <laughs> and, um, and when I take my breaks, because I work out of my home studio, I have a beautiful patio that I go and sit and listen to the birds and you know, uh, watch my flowers grow. And um, I walk in the mornings at this fantastic, beautiful park. That does and it. then these are my family, my husband, my two sons and their girlfriends. And this is Derek. So here's what I love. This is why this makes it me very happy. Derek is one of my son Alex's friends. And at any given moment, Derek will show up right before we're going to have dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and he's always welcome, but he has this uncanny ability to know when we're going to sit down for a big dinner. So Derek is like part of the family. Um, and so as you can see, I'm kind of like your mom if she could make pretty letters. Okay, that's, that's really how I think of it. I myself. feel like that as well. Having like spoken to you over the past couple of days, I'm definitely getting the mom vibe. So that's great. Yeah, I de it is. It's just a part of who I am. So, you know, I embrace it. Um, this, these are some of the things that I've done. These are some personal things. Um, I love to do envelopes. These are little canvases. And this is all done in gouache paint, which is one of my favorite things to use. Oh, um, I'm bring down what you did yes. for us, actually. Hang on. So yeah. Debbie was over. You sent us some mail. Hope everybody can see that. Handwritten mail from Debbie from when she was with us. And we have it framed in the office. We love it. Usually Aww. the camera is a lot taller because we've got Tom yeah. here. And usually at the top you can see all the stuff that we've got up there, um, which is where it was. But me and Carol don't need the screen that high today. Yeah. We're pretty much <laughs> but yeah, we have that framed in our office, Debbie. Aww, I'm honoured. Um, um, I've seen your work on Instagram where you do, like where you write up envelopes and stuff. It is beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. love it. I'm gonna pop that up now. It'll probably fall down and hit us. Yeah. So, no, we'll wait <laughs> so th this is some more. I've done some wedding maps, which gives me a chance to do a little bit of pen and ink illustration and watercolor. Um, and you know, this is all gouache on the. That's actually a recipe for a granola bar <laughs> that I make. And um, you know, some more things that this is using brushes and paint um, and some markers. And I did a thing for a while where I was doing people's names um, just as a thank you for my followers, you know, being there. So, um, so I did some of those. And I think you did Tom's name as well? I did, yes, I did. I don't have it up here, but I did. And then these are some of the um, commercial jobs that I've done. This was for Cece of New York, who is this beautiful invitation designer. And I got to do a project for Target and I was visiting my son in DC and we actually saw it in the store. So I had to take a picture. Yeah, it's yes. so cool. That's fab. <laughs> and I also and just want to add, sorry to cut across you, Debbie. Um, anyone who has got any questions, I know Amy's just popped mm -hmm. one in there. At the bottom underneath the big green button, there's a section that says ask a question. We are going to do a Q&A once Debbie's finished her demonstration. So any questions you have, please put them in there, guys, and we'll go through them with Debbie um, very shortly. Carry on. <laughs> sure. Um, these are some of my fonts, my font families. I have 23 total fonts in all of the families. And I'm working on another one that might be available through Design Cuts. Secret exclusive there. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you're um, listening. <laughs> And then um, these are just some of the products that have my fonts on them. It's always fun to go into a store like Target or Hobby Lobby or 
any any number of uh, stationary stores and see my fonts used. Yeah, it's I like, love the Christmas pillow. Is it a pillow or something? something yes, the really Merry cool. Christmas is a pillow, um, T-shirts, mugs, books. It, that's one of the most fun things. And of course, the workshops. So there's Laura and I at Adobe and uh, some of one of my group classes, TypeCon, and of course my Skillshare classes. And last but not least, <laughs> This yes, was <laughs> okay. Now I had to do this. Tom Ross is very tall and dreamy because <laughs> when I, I was watching him, anymore, Debbie. <laughs> do you remember on the future with Chris where he did oh, yeah. that? That was so I, yeah. Chris is so dreamy. <laughs> I, had to, I had to throw that in there. But um, I so that video that we did, the live we did, is actually up on YouTube as well as my channel. Um, which has everything that you'd want. Oops. And um, and then I said I, I'm a Procreate newbie. And so these are two little pieces that I created with the lovely oh, Nicole. Oh That's my gosh. Cool. <laughs> and this is available on, De on Design Cut. So I purchased that and I was um, amazed. So I got to do those. And then I started doing a little painting. So, wow. and... So that is about me. Um, and now, shall I go right into it? Yeah, so if you didn't hear earlier on, guys, today Debbie's gonna be showing us the top five mistakes that brush lettering beginners make. So uh, if you don't mind, Debbie, can you share the uh, the funny story about your demo that you put together for this? <laughs> okay, okay, so <laughs> this is what I created because I did not want to take someone's work off the internet and say, look how bad this is. Like that would not be good. <laughs> So because I've been doing this for such a long time and my eye and hand are trained to make things consistent and even, and I struggled to really make it Very look bad, bad. <laughs> but, which is a good thing. I, it, you know, that was good for me to know. Um, so I tried to, I tried to include all five mistakes in here. Before I point them out, I want to say this. I know that every beginner starts somewhere and you know, the more that you know, the better you can do. So there's nothing, you know, I don't want to say anything bad to anyone who might've done something that's similar to this because you're, you're just starting. And so, you know, go for it and do the best you can. Hopefully with the information I share with you today, you'll be able to recognize some things that might improve that. And I, so, I have seen this presentation, guys. There are some really, really helpful tips in here. Um, I know you'll be seeing it for the first yeah. time today. So obviously, if you're with us live now or if you're watching the replay, um, please do take down your notes if this is your thing because you're going to find this really, really helpful today. Great. Thank you. So mistake number one, I call it fancy before foundation. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Which I think fancy before foundation. <laughs> same as that. <laughs> It's like we get so excited about, you know, all the different things that are out there, um, all the different markers. And we see people adding shadows and adding all this decoration and flourishes and we want to do it all. And so the, there, it's very hard to resist not trying to make it real fancy. But um, I'm going to ask you to resist that and look at what are the foundations of lettering. So when we look at this here, we kind of see that this the um, foundation is not real solid. If you look at the purple lines, we don't quite know, uh, um, you know, what is the form that it's trying to to make. And um, when we look at this flourish down here, that's kind of out of sync. We don't have a balance with um, the rest of the piece. So that's number one. And by the way, I'm going to present the mistakes first and then the solutions. Okay. So help is on the way. <laughs> The next thing is inconsistent letter forms. So same layout, but you'll see like this A is very small, this O is very big, this B is very big, these are the same width. This flourish looks like it could be a letter, yeah. uh, as well as this one over here on the end could be a Z. We've got loops that don't quite really work. We've got a thin here, a thick here. So you can see it's kind of all over the place. Um, so, so funny is when you showed me this yesterday, 
I looked at it and I was like, wow, I think that's really good because I would never <laughs> have to do anything like that. But when you start to point out, you know, the things like that, then you're like, you look at it and yeah. you're like, oh, actually, you're completely correct. That, that could be a letter and that is slightly bigger. And as someone who's not a designer doesn't necessarily know it, but when you point it out, it seems really obvious yeah. and you're like, wow, mind blown, you know? Right. <laughs> well, that's it's good. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. That's good to hear because I know you did get on and you were like, oh, that's really nice. And it's like, that's the bad one. <laughs> but again, you know, and, and you see a lot of beginners that post and people are saying, that's amazing. And, and it is for, if you have never done anything with a yeah. brush pen or lettering, it is amazing. So we're just trying to get you to bump up to a, another level. <laughs> I think like everybody has to start somewhere. Exactly. 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 And I don't want to stop anyone from starting. That's the last thing I want to do. Yeah, you just have to take that jump. Also, you yeah. guys are very quiet in the comments. So please do let us know if you can hear and see everything okay. I know you're probably just sitting there taking it all in, but uh, make sure you let us know that you're still there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, scribbling notes. I, want to, I feel like I want to be scribbling notes. Yeah, too. take everything back. <laughs> Mistake number three, inconsistent lines. So this has to do with the contrast, the thicks and the thins or monoline. If you're going to make things monoline, which means all of the lines are the same weight, then make sure that they're all monoline. But if you want there to be contrast, you have to specifically know where to put those and really focus on doing that. So I'm pointing out how these are really very similar lines. There's there's not um, a lot of very high contrast. Yeah. And that is also that can also have to do with how you're holding the pen and um, your body mechanics. So I, that's something I'm going to mention uh, later. So we will talk about that. Mistake number four is over flourishing. Again, in our excitement to make it really pretty and do all kinds of cool <laughs> things. That's something I definitely do. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, who doesn't want to like play around with flourishes? They're fun. Um, but when you know how to flourish and where to flourish, you can really make it just look so much better. So we've got a lot of over flourishing and I would call it inappropriate. This coming all the way around here and then joining with this is just not, not really the best for that word. Um, the E connecting with the L. We always want to make sure that the statement or the word is what is highlighted and what stands out. So when we add all of these little things, we're, we're more distracted by all those things rather than really knowing what the word is saying or the statement stay, saying. It's kind of getting lost there in the flourishes. Yeah, exactly. And mistake number five is poor spacing. So... A lot of times people just start lettering. They don't uh, lay anything out or put any guidelines down or sketch it out before. Because again, we're so excited. We grab the brush and we want to just start lettering. Well, you'll typically find that then you get things crunched in together or you leave big gaps or there's uh, spaces in between letters that should not be there. So that is our mistake number five. And of course, all five mistakes in one piece. <laughs> yeah, it looks very busy. <laughs> A lot going on, isn't it? So, <laughs> so we're going to start with the solutions. So solution number one for being fancy over foundation, establish word hierarchy, do thumbnail sketches, and do a pencil skeleton. So let's go over each of those. So establishing word hierarchy means that you're asking, what are the most important words that best express the sentiment? Yeah. What are the secondary words? And what are the least important words? And I will literally write it out in pencil and look at it for a few minutes and just really start to highlight which are those words. So that gets me focused on making sure that I'm going to, to make those words stand out. Then do thumbnail sketches. I probably do minimum of three, sometimes more. I actually did these thumbnail sketches to make the bad one. And I found <laughs> I, I kept doing them too correctly. Yeah. I was like, okay, I got this bad, but this is like laid out well. So 
And then this was if I were to really do the sketch, um, how I might highlight every layout, how I might highlight the word sketch. And then this is what I did in the final because I didn't want to get too carried away in the layout. I just wanted to, to focus on the five mistakes we're trying to correct. So the next thing is to do a pencil skeleton. Now, what I've got behind here comes from Design Cuts in Barnard's um, Grid Builder, which is fantastic. Yeah, let us know in the comments if you've got Ian's Grid Builder. I know we've uh, done a couple of webinars with Ian and uh, it's certainly one of the popular ones, but let us know if you have that, because if you have yeah. that, you're gonna be able to put this into action straight away. Oh, absolutely, it's brilliant. Thank you, Ian. Um, <laughs> we're big, oh, yeah. we're big fans of Ian as well. <laughs> Yeah, what I actually did was I actually printed them out so that I could show that you can print them on your computer. You know, he, he provides um, SVG, PNG, and I think a PDF, and you can reduce them. And so even if you're not using Procreate, which they are made for, um, they, he also gives you those so that you can just do it with your pencil. So you can see just having that layout with the grid behind it, now we're starting to really be able to, we've got the foundation, now we're gonna be able to build on that. We can work through all of where we want to put, you know, where should the flourishes go? Where do they make sense? Where is there space that, you know, I have to be careful of between that G and that H, um, even down here uh, between this A and S. So you're, you're able to work out all of the problems in pencil and you love pencil because it has an eraser. <laughs> so, you know, you can just go to town and when you've got a great pencil skeleton, it takes the worry out of having that brush in your hand and where am I gonna put things and where should I put it? You know, I can't undo it kind of thing. Yes. Um, Angela in the comments said that she has the grid builder in her cart. So maybe yeah. today this might convince her to take the plunge. And Sonia has it, so yeah. that's great. Esther did just ask us to repeat that. So it's The Grid Builder by Ian Barnard. Yes. Which can be found in the Design Cuts Marketplace. I've got a picture of it right here. That's oh. the one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so um, I have a very quick video that is going to show you how I do a pencil skeleton, starting by writing out the letters very plainly in pencil and then working through <coughs> um, where to put things, etc. Now this is sped up very quickly, but just to give you a sense of, so there I just start out very basic and now I'm analyzing where does it make sense for things to go? Where does the word need balance? Um, what best expresses the word? and then changing and manipulating the letters a little bit to make it a little bit more interesting. And I think, you know, you've hit the nail on the head, Debbie, a lot of people see the finished image yeah. on Instagram or, you know, websites or wherever, you know, marketplace, and that you don't think that everyone, even someone as talented as you or Ian or whoever, goes oh through God. that stage, they do the sketches, they, they change their mind a million times, you know, that everyone does that, and that's completely normal, and it's good to do that. So Absolutely. Behind you have to do all of that yeah. to find out what's going to work. Yes. And, and mind you, after many, many years, you can, you train your eye and hand to have um, good spacing to, it, you know, kind of you, you create a library of where is it good to create ligatures? Where is it good to put a flourish? What kinds of flourishes would I like to do? You really create a library, but you have to build that library from the ground up. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to train your eye and hand also. Um, so solution two for inconsistent letter forms, use guidelines. And I am going to be, uh, I, in fact, I have sent to you. You have? Exemplars and guidelines that are free to your listeners for them to download. There's even more than what I've got in here. I added a bunch yeah, more stuff. Say, guys, Debbie has sent over a massive file for you guys. It's got so much in there. So after the call today, when we do the um, homework assignment, I will create the thread in the forum as we do every week. And I will put that download link in there for you. Please go and grab it. Even if it's 
you know, you've never done this before and you just want to try because Debbie's given us some really good stuff completely free of charge and absolutely so helpful i think yeah. Debbie, you brought some some of those with you when you came to visit us and they are so much fun really? to use with the whole team we're using them and they really are like it, you're gonna have so much fun yeah and you're yeah. Them completely free from debbie today so make sure you go and get that after the call yes and um, and even if you use a pencil, in fact, I recommend if someone's never picked up a brush before, just use a pencil. Everybody knows how to use a pencil and you won't be so intimidated to start. So yeah. in fact, my tutorials that I do on uh, my Instagram stories, I only use a pencil because I really wanna invite people to just join in and just grab a pencil and some lined paper. And of course, Ian's grid builder, which is fantastic. <laughs> I just <laughs> can't say enough about it. I love so, it. Loading in Debbie for that gift. Jessie's yeah. love it. Thank you. Amy says oh, lovely. Right. Amy says terrific. Thank you. There's so many right. points coming in for you. My pleasure. My pleasure. I'm I'm here to help you learn how to do this. And I, I just love getting people started. Um, so the pencil skeleton, this is what I did in Photoshop. So once I did the final um layout and lettering i scanned it in and i used ian's um the pngs or pdfs whichever they were in photoshop so you can also use them there which is fantastic so that is your basic uh, solution two solution three inconsistent lines this is where it's so important to practice the basic strokes and the letters follow a ductus and apply and release pressure. So a ductus is the sequence and number of strokes that are needed to create any letter or character. So on my exemplars, you'll see for each letter, there's a one with a, a line that tells you the direction to go in, there's a two, there's a three, et cetera. And please try to follow those. That's learning the basic foundation. And then once you get that foundation, you can break the rules and you can play around with it and it's not a problem, but you need to get the foundation down first. And um, at any point, if we wanna do live demo, I can show you basic strokes. And yeah, so let us know in the comments guys, Debbie's got uh, set up to do a, literally a live demo and show you this right now. So if you guys wanna blow that up in the comments and tell us yes, Debbie will let do it. Know. But you have okay. to. <laughs> And I'll kind of keep going until we hear that they want to see that, and we can certainly do it at the end. <clears throat> so solution number four, over flourishing, learn the basics of flourishing. And very simply, the basics of proper flourishing are understanding where to flourish. It's at the entry and exit of any stroke, how to flourish, and it's basically based on the oval shape. You can make some modifications, but that's the basic. And why to flourish? Why should you add a flourish? Every flourish has to have a reason to be there. So if it enhances the letter or word, you're good. If it doesn't, then it's just um, not appropriate. It's not, you know, helping. And to help all of your listeners, our listeners today, I am giving a link to my Skillshare class, How to Flourish a Word. In the bottom link. You carry on. I'm just grabbing that on my yes. side. Okay. So this link gets you into this class for free. You don't have to sign up yeah, and get a skill care. <laughs> it's a freebie and it's good for one week. So this can allow you to go in and do your homework. That's so kind of you, Debbie. Thank you so much. My pleasure. I'm putting that link in now. Okay. So yeah, big shiny button at the bottom, guys. There is your free pass to the skill check. And um, solution number five, poor spacing. So I'm going to give you, in the handouts is a sheet where it helps you practice the letter N. The letter N is the most common letter for good spacing. It trains your eye and hand to create good spacing. So if you just sit there and write a whole page of Ns, you're doing a lot to um, help yourself understand about good spacing. And this is what it looks like. I throw in the word banana <laughs> because it's hard to just, and a banana. <laughs> it's just hard to write all ends without yeah. doing something. And um, the other 
a solution for poor spacing is to create rough drafts. So once I did the pencil skeleton, I went over and started to play around. And you know, I and this is also a good time to see which brush marker do I want to use, or do I want to use a real brush and paint? And um, and so I do did that, and then I modified again the second rough draft. And you can see I've in pencil, I've said, okay, are my ovals working? Is everything pretty, you know, good as far as that goes? How's the spacing? So you're you're again gives you an opportunity to work everything out so that you're not, you know, having those problems once you have the brush. So you can see the difference in the yeah. final result. And I, when this, I saw this, I was like, okay, now I see your point. <laughs> right. And I didn't add any fancy other than I did put a drop shadow in there, but um, I didn't specifically because I really want people to look at the letters for the beauty that they provide just by being beautiful forms. You know, a beautiful letter is is a, a work of art. And we it's fun to add all kinds of, you know, decoration to it, but let's go back and just remember that without the forms and the shapes and the and the strokes and the contrast and the spacing, we're we're not really going to create the best visual that we can for whatever piece we're trying to make. So, um the last thing is how to improve your lettering overall. And this is something I see a lot of people don't ever talk about and don't understand, and it's body mechanics. Number one is probably how to hold the brush, and I actually have a little video I'm going to show that's going to demonstrate all of these things. Um, and then body position, the slant of the paper, doing whole arm movement, and slowing down. Most beginners try to go too fast. Mm -hmm. so. Here is my little video that covers that. Michelle in the comments said, look how organized she is with the presentation and everything. Ooh, Thank nice you. Michelle. She's amazing. <laughs> <Brilliant>. <laughs> I'm just seeing in the video about if you left-handed, I know when you were over with us, Debbie, and um, Tom is left handed and he really struggled to to practice the flourishes because well he was getting ink everywhere. Oh, because you write over it. And Debbie was explaining about body mechanics at the time and it you know it's a lot more practice is required because he's, he's left handed. Okay. Do we have any left handers uh, in the chat today? Let us yeah, know. Yeah, let us know. And if you are, have you tried lettering and do you find it? Or if you haven't tried and you do try, yeah, take using these tips Debbie's guides, let us know how you get on. Yeah, and um, and then we'll just do a quick whole arm movement video. And these videos can be found on your YouTube, Debbie. Is that right? Yes. Perfect. Um, some of these come from my class. Okay. So yeah. I don't know if they're all on on YouTube, but um, they are on my class. Uh, Margot said, yes, she's a lefty. <laughs> yeah, I think we're all right-handed apart from Tom, right? Yeah, I, mean, I think so, as far as I know. Oh, wow, so Biggie said that she saw the video, uh, Michelle. But Michelle, sorry, I'm reading another comment as I come in. Debbie, Biggie said they saw the video and that's what made her start lettering. Oh, wow. good. <laughs> That's me. Oh, and Jessie is left-handed and says she slants the paper quite a bit um, and uses another piece of paper so to try not to smudge. That's what Tom needed to do. Yeah. There was a lot of <laughs> smudging going on that day. <laughs> oh my goodness, Debbie. I imagine you get arm ache quite a lot. Yeah. If you do it. <laughs> Like if you're doing a really intense piece, I imagine your arms ache by the end of it. There's so much that goes into yeah. it. Yeah. Yes, yes. So I warm up every day. I do whole arm movements every day. I do um, you know, sometimes I do like basic strokes. It's it's like a muscle. And um, you know, it, I walk every day to keep my body in shape. 
So I have to also do things to keep my arm in shape because this is the tool that I use yeah. to create my work. Um, before I, this is the hangout homework, but before I talk about that, I wanted to also mention, I did send a link and um, I, I'm, I didn't put it up here in the slides, but it is also, if you wanna get two months free on Skillshare, for two months, you can take all of my classes, you can take any classes you want, and as long as you cancel before the two months is up, you don't pay anything. So yeah. you do have to set up an account with that link um, versus the other free link. You just go straight into my class and take it for free, but that's the only thing you can take. So for people who would like to take more classes, not only mine, but other people's classes, Ian has some classes on there, then you can uh, use that link, which I, uh, I, believe I sent to you guys. So yeah, I don't know if you put that in the chat. I mentioned Debbie sent over a pack for you guys, but I also have some really handy and helpful links. Um, so again, after the call is over and we head over to the forum, I will put all of those in the thread for you, um, including the free Skillshare class that's at the bottom here. As Debbie mentioned, I have got another link for you for a free trial. Um, so you can go and do as many classes as you like and then just remember to cancel it. And uh, you've had a, a good couple of months in there. So that's another massive thank you debbie yeah. because that's yeah. a pleasure for you to do um, and yeah, make sure you head over to that thread in the forum to go and get all of your free goodies at the end <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Yes. to say that and um, she did a 30-day uh challenge on instagram and actually had to stop for a while because it was hurting so bad so what you're saying about it being a complete workout Jessie. Maybe I need to try that then. Get the whatever arms. Get my guns. <laughs> We're gonna quit the gym now. And yeah, that's it. Every <laughs> day. Work out anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so the the homework the, the homework is simply to focus on the foundations, and just create one word using the process that I've taken everybody through today. You can use a pencil. Don't stress about using a brush, but prepare. Practice the basic strokes that I sent you. Practice the letters using the exemplar. Practice writing the letter N. Warm up with whole arm movement. Do all of that as a preparation before you choose a word, create thumbnails, create a pencil skeleton, create a rough draft, and create a final. And that, even if you just did all the preparation and didn't even get to do the word, that is going to drastically improve anything that you do as far as lettering. Yeah, so obviously we would love you guys to take the tips from today's call on board. And if you wanna give it a go, um, then please do as always share your, your results with yeah, us. Um, even if you go for the pencil option, like just take a picture of it and share it with us in the forum or on Instagram, tag Debbie so she can see. Um, but if, if you don't feel brave enough to sort of take that first step and share something that you've actually done, just practice in your own time with the skills and the, the tips that Debbie is sharing with us. Um, Cause you know, you might get there and think, yeah. you know what, I'm going to post this, even if it's a couple of weeks or months down the line. So yeah, uh, well, yeah but we'd love to share somewhere. it. Like if you're brand oh. new to it, everyone's Yes, somewhere, so. yes, exactly. Post your practice, pro, post your practice sheets. And if, and if you tag me and I see them, I can make some recommendations of things that you might be you know, doing incorrectly that you don't realize. So, you know, I'm here to help. And mm -hmm. if you post and share and tag me, I will definitely comment and try to offer you any any thoughts that I have that can help you improve. Amazing. Oh, thank you, Debbie. So obviously Love earlier you. in the call we did ask where the guys up for a live demo and the answer was definitely yes. So is that okay. right? We should have actually made that as a poll and to, uh, Tom will tell me off because he loves yeah. a good poll <laughs> and I forgot to do it. But um, yes, they, we would love that. So okay. if we And can... um, before I do anything with the, um, with the brush, yes, I'm just going to show you, you this was what I did on uh, Procreate. Whoops. That looks like a lot of light, doesn't it? Reflecting. I might need to turn off the light. Is it okay? Because it looks a little blurry. It, it, I think it's just there's a lag because it's your phone. It's on Wi Fi. It's probably not as. Okay. Is that okay? Nobody catches up. It will get there.
So are we still good? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're all good. Okay, good. All right, so um, now I just realized that I have to move. I've got the headphones on. And we can't hear you without the headphones if you, if you can't, if you want to unplug them. It's okay without the headphones? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can yeah. still hear you. Oh, great. Okay. So, <laughs> what I always do is I always practice my basic strokes. And some of the most important things are the ovals and the thicks and thins. But I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to go through these primarily because this is really important. I, I hear a lot of people that don't have the ability to go from thick to thin, and I think that this will help. So the first thing that I'm doing is, first of all, I'm holding the, the brush between my um, three fingers in a triangular position. I know some people hold it like this, and I'm going to just caution you that that's very dangerous to your hand. You can damage your ligaments, and um, also you don't have as great of a range of motion, and you're just not putting the brush tip in the best position. When you're holding it like this, the brush tip is on the side, so now I can plant the brush and pull to make a very thick stroke, or, I can plant it on the tip and make a very thin stroke because I have a lot of control over the tip because yes. of the angle and how my hand is holding it. And then I can also go from thick to thin much more easily or from thin to thick. And as far as making those upstrokes that everybody is always having a hard time with. Again, I have control over the tip because of the way that I'm holding the brush. So that's one thing that I think a lot of people could try to do differently and that might help. Yeah. Now do um, something that I call the roller coaster. So we're going up thin on the upstroke and then pressure down on the downstroke, up thin on the upstroke, pressure. And it's okay to stop and move the paper so that you make sure, in fact, I've got to move some things and actually put my hand up here to hold the paper. Because you don't want to be reaching with your hand and putting your hand in an awkward position like that. Yeah. yeah. Again, I'm hurting my wrist. So it's okay to just move the paper to accommodate your hand. And then when I was talking about flourishing, I was talking about making ovals. This is one of the biggest exercises that I do every day. And what you're doing, again, is you're not only training your eye and your hand to make oval shapes, but you're also training your eye and hand to, to uh, make consistent spacing. Yeah. You can see I'm trying to space these so that they're evenly spaced. And you said, Debbie, you do this every day before you start? Yes, yes. If I, like I said, this is a muscle, these are, Actually, your hand doesn't have muscles. It has ligaments. <laughs> but um, but yeah, you can have more muscles in your arms. And so you want to warm them up. And I went through a period where I had carpal tunnel. And that was not pleasant. <laughs> so, yeah. So once you've done some of those, then you can move into some of the strokes that are a little bit more complicated. So there's something there, Debbie. But Julie got to run because um, she got an appointment. But if you're not aware, Julie, you can catch this on a replay later once the live stream is finished. So if anyone does have to go anywhere, you can come back and finish watching this later and it will still be there for you to take down all of these tips and tricks. Yes. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> I will. So you can see I just 
made this shape. So I'm combining thick to thin, thick to thin. I'm also doing an oval shape and I'm also looking at the spacing. So these small shapes are also things that help to train you so that when you're actually lettering, you've got that memory in the muscle. And then I'm going to do a little bit to show you the lettering. So here's the ductus. You can see there's arrows and there's numbers. So I know this is my first stroke. This is my second stroke. This is my third stroke. And I always keep my letters on my exemplars very simple and plain because you can add flourished uh, strokes to them later, but they should be the base for just, you know, just the basic letter. So for instance, following the ductus, there's just a plain A. Is the video okay? Yeah, yeah. It's, again, it's lagging slightly a little bit, but when you, when you keep it quite still, it seems to catch up, so it's fine. Okay, great. I also feel like I could watch Debbie work all I know, day. I'm like, it's mesmerizing. It's almost like relaxing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if I wanted to take this A and decide to flourish it, I would start to look at where are the entry strokes. So we have an entry stroke here. We actually have an entry stroke here. We have an entry stroke here. Where are the exit strokes? We have one here, we have one here, we have one here. So that's like six different places that I could consider. So but don't I, put on all of them, otherwise that would be a bad habit. Well, but <laughs> if it's done, generally speaking, if it's done well, then you actually can do a lot more than you think. So let's say I decide to come into this stroke like that. And maybe I come into this stroke. Wow. That. And then maybe I come out from this stroke. That looks so pretty. It's beautiful. So by starting with the basic letter and following the ductus and then understanding where to flourish, how to flourish, and why to flourish, yeah. I create any number of combinations for each letter. That's like almost like a, giving me like a tattoo. Yeah. Kind of like, you know, how they're like a letter. Image. Yeah, yeah. tattooed on you. It'd be beautiful. Yeah. Now, um, I wanted, to, I don't know time wise how we're doing, but I don't know if anybody would like to see me letter with a, with a like wash and, and, um, kind of more real brush. Yeah, definitely. Yes, I know we did actually have a couple of questions about, you know, what, what brushes are you using and, and, and things yeah. like that, as in physical brushes, not digital. So if you want to yeah. show that, and then we can literally jump into some Q&A for the last five minutes. Sure. Um, we've got 10 minutes to go. So, um, I'm going to show you two things. This is the Pentel color brush. Normally, this color brush, it actually comes in many colors, but, let me just yes. So and you're, I'd love to see you do it with a real brush. That's my jam. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this is the Pentel color brush, which to me is the closest to mimicking a real brush. Wow. This is what I brought for all of you when I came oh, to yeah, visit. I the Carol on the choir. I said, I recognize that. Is that the one that- Yes, you have that one. It is. I do have that. <laughs> yeah. And what's cool about this brush is once the ink barrel is empty, you can clean it out really well, and then you can still use the brush because it is a really cool brush. It's a synthetic. It has a lot of snap to it and, um, oops. So I'm using gouache paint, and I typically use Turner because it's less expensive than um, Winsor & Newton, but Winsor & Newton is probably a higher quality. Okay. 
make, you make it look so easy. <laughs> it's years of training. After the call, Debbie, can you email me the name of that brush so I can let the guys know? Yes. Just for spelling and things. Yes. Um, we just had a couple of questions. What What is the name of it? So I will put it in the forum thread, guys, for you to check out. And maybe uh, the name of the gouache that you're using, because I think you said two. Yes. Yeah. I'll send it over. I can give you a list of um, stuff, brushes and markers that I recommend. Thank you. Uh, yes. Now, the thing about using gouache and a real brush is you really have to have your fundamentals down because now you have to worry about ink flow and consistency. Yeah. So that's where you don't want to, you know, go into this until you have those things down. And then this is... Um, my one of my favorite brushes it's a princeton round brush and again i'm just going to use the one of my favorite words in italian i'm taking italian lessons i've been taking for about a year now oh wow yeah it's fun oops let me get a little bit more and the consistency of the gouache is what I call bird poop because <laughs> it just kind of is. <laughs> if you've ever had that happen to you, <laughs> and this has a really nice. Um, quality to it, this brush, so you can get really nice, beautiful lines, and it has a lot of spring. Well, the video is frozen for us, Debbie. Gotta be careful that my paint's getting a little bit too dry. We've the video on your mobile is frozen for us here, unfortunately. Oh. It, it should catch up in a minute, but at the okay. moment I can only see we're, you on your other screen. <laughs> we're running a little bit behind on the words. <laughs> okay. So do you want me to stop? Yeah, you might need to just to let it catch up. No worries. I don't know if that's happening for everybody in the comments as well. Um, but it's yeah, certainly not a snow. Do you want me to just uh, stop lettering and come back in? If we can, uh, it's saying waiting to reconnect, so it might have just, okay. it will pop back on, I'm sure, in a second. You're going to have okay. to let us know what the word was. Though, yeah, what, were you said, what was the word? We didn't see what it was. Oh, I'm sorry. Mer meravigliosa. And what does it that mean? Means wonderful. Oh. And I just love that word. I think that, um, uh, here, I'll finish it real quick, hopefully. You can lift it up to your uh, other camera, hopefully. Oh, there we go. Yes. Don't worry, guys. We're going to see the finished product. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Oh, Michelle said, is that Elvis in the background? I don't know what she's it is Elvis. Oh, beautiful. Oh, that's gorgeous. So, so we've had a question come in from Michelle, Debbie. You have yeah. a, like a character in the back of your studio and she wants to know, yeah. is it Elvis? Oh, it is Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what is she talking about? I didn't Good say eye, that. Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> so my husband is, I call him a closet Elvis fan. Because, you know, he was like, when Elvis maybe wasn't as popular or something, I think, you know, he, he didn't want to tell people. But I'm like, come out of the closet. <laughs> so people in my family give him Elvis gifts. He's got a velvet Elvis hanging in his office. <laughs> and, yeah. And so that is an Elvis doll that keeps me company. <laughs> uh, 
Um, everybody it. loved that the artwork there yeah. in the comments. By the way, they're going crazy for it. Pretty. Um, do you made up by the, I think, or is that the spelling of the Italian word? I think so. Amazing. Yes. Meravigliosa. Hopefully, I spelled it correctly. <laughs> <laughs> so, if we, if you're okay for time, Debbie, we're going to jump into a couple of questions before we go. Yeah. Um, so, the very first question that we had from Amy earlier was, "What brushes do you use?" So, obviously, you have just uh, mentioned them there, which hopefully Amy managed to jot down. But if not, you're going to send them over to me so we can share it with everybody. Yeah. A little bit. I later. will. I will. I have so many different brushes. And um, and I think they're they're for different levels of of lettering. So and some people like some better than others. That's I have my preferences. But I certainly think for beginners, you want to start out with a firmer uh, like Tombow um, Food and Soki or um, Faber Castell. Um, the zebra brush is very nice, and those are smaller Pentel Sign pen. Uh, it's also called the Touch, Food Aid Touch, but it's made by Pentel. And um, yeah, those are, I, I think those are good starters for um, for people who are just beginning. But I will send you a list of Yeah, Donna, Donna had also asked, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It's probably just my accent. Dana, da Dana, Dana, Dana Donna. Sorry. <laughs> oh, Dana. <laughs> One way, I'll say it another. I'll just, She's from I'll Texas, I think that's Dana. Dana. If I'm you know, Dana. Dana, we'll go with Dana. <laughs> okay. Um, um, Dana also asked, do you have preferred brushes? So if you can send me some of your preferences, um, yeah. that would be super helpful. But another yeah. two, two questions which I feel kind of go hand in hand here, and I think it would be good to finish on these because yeah. we haven't really spoke about it yet, but it obviously is something that you do. So um, Pam has asked, um, what sort of program do you use to make your fonts functional once you've made all the characters? Dana. <laughs> Dana. Oh, right. Sorry, yeah. Dana. Okay. Um, um, I actually use the process that you have for making fonts. Okay, so I use Font Lab. Um, I have glyphs, but I have not had the time to learn it yet. <laughs> and I know Font Lab, so I use Font Lab. So I hand letter everything first, and I do hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pages, and then I go through them and I see which ones I like. And then I scan them all into the computer. Um, if they need some cleaning up, I clean them up in Photoshop. And then I literally copy and paste them into Font Lab. And then in Font Lab, you need to draw each letter in its own cell um, with a, a pen tool. And then, of course, you have to do kerning, which is how the letters all sit next to each other. And, um, and then I do some coding to um, make ligatures appear. Um, and, and I do a lot of extra alternates in all of my fonts. I have big fonts. As I always say, I like big fonts. I cannot <laughs> lie. <laughs> oh. That'll be stuck in my head for the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah, sorry. So, um, so yeah. I, I, I love, love, love to just keep coming up with more flourish letters to give people that use them, you know, the opportunity to really do some fun stuff and, and come up with something unique. So that's, I'm working on a font right now. In fact, if I can scare, share my screen just yeah. for one moment, yeah. then I can show you. Okay. I'm just I'm gonna answer a question on your behalf, Debbie. I, I you know this yes. about it, but Alf has asked about using graphics tablets, um, like a Wacom or obviously yes. iPad or whatever. So Debbie is just learning Procreate as of recently. Um yes. so she's obviously done some bits in there, she's still learning. Yes. Um but I, I do have a Wacom tablet Instagram or shared some of your journey so far on Instagram or something somewhere on that or mm -hmm. Yes, um, I, I do have a Wacom tablet. And yes, I use that sometimes also when I'm working. Primarily I use it, well, I, I use it a lot for different things, it depends. If I'm doing cleanup work, it's nice to bring it down and use the actual pen tool to um, get finer detail when I'm trying to clean things up rather than a mouse. So, um, can you see my new font? Yes, 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 beautiful. Okay. So, so this is, um, that's in memory, it, or not in memory, in honor of, uh, it's, it's a letter, a love letter to my husband. Um, oh, 
because we've been married 35 years. It will be 35 years in November. And so got to make a font for our ham and to celebrate that we still like each other. Have you got a name for it? I do, but I'm not going to say it. No, that's fine. <laughs> I, I have to say, when, Debbie, when you came into us um, uh, two years ago, um, I always, always loved hearing the backstory behind your fonts. And you told ah. me at the time about, uh, I'm, I'm going to butcher the pronunciation, so I'm sorry, but uh, Cinquedone. And it's Cinquedone, always, yes. It's always stuck with me because I was planning my honey for everybody else. I was planning my honeymoon at the time. And Debbie gave me the most amazing tips of where to go in Italy. We had oh. this really lovely chat, and I just loved the backstory that you gave. And I know that every font you do always has a backstory, which is so lovely. Yeah, I love I, that. That's the whole reason for me creating fonts. Um, I I always have to have a reason. I have to have an inspiration. I don't want to just sit down and draw letters with no intention behind it. Yeah. So you know, Cinque Donne was for the five most important women in my life. And um, and it actually turned out that it, Cinque Donne means five women. Um, I have groups of five women, like in my life, I have five sisters. I have five really great friends that I've known for years and years that we do things together. So it was kind of really interesting. So that was done for all of those women to honor all of those women. Um, Bello Chia was to honor my my heritage, my mother, and um, she was a beautiful. Let she had the most perfect handwriting, mm -hmm. and um, so that was for her and my aunt as well, who was very influential in my life. And Dom loves Mary was to honor my in-laws who loved each other and passed away, and their names were Dom and Mary. Yeah. So this one is for my husband and for our thirty-five year anniversary, and I'm, I can't I'm very excited. I'm so excited to find out the name. Yeah, yeah. So a so, lot of love went into this. <laughs> um, just very lastly, um, just one more question that I've seen, which I think will probably be helpful uh, with regards to what we've learned today. Um, I think maybe was it Dana again that asked? I can't remember now. I've lost it in the chat. But could you quickly just talk about sort of paper and recommendations oh, yeah. on that? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, first of all, I use a lot of tracing paper, lots of tracing paper, Esther, because sorry. Esther. Sorry, Esther. Yeah, it's so it's so good because it you know you can work out so many things and and it has a smooth surface so it doesn't you know ruin your brushes your brush pens some brush pens get very um, worn down by different papers and then I use like the uh, XL Canson marker paper um, which is very smooth so. I would say I use tracing paper 90% of the time when I'm just creating and coming up with things. And then if I'm really trying to do something a little bit, you know, more finished, I might go to the marker paper. Um, and Rodia is another good paper. Um, Claire Fontaine is another good paper. And I can, again, I can send you a list so that you can have that available for everyone. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So I think that's everything for today. You've been amazing. You have given us. Uh, so much value, so much so. free stuff for everybody to check Such out. Such a fun call as it's, well. Yeah, I've learned loads and this is yeah. not what I do. So for anyone who is in design, I'm, I can imagine that they're just like, well, taking so much away from today. So thank you so much for your time, Debbie. My pleasure. Thank you for everyone who's joined us live on the call. And to yes. everyone who's going to be watching. Thanks everyone for watching and joining in and supporting me if you came here. No, and you already knew me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So thanks to everybody. Don't forget your homework assignment if you're going to take yes. a big part in that. Yeah. Um, take something away from today. <laughs> Try the skills and tips and everything that Debbie shared. It will all be li listed in the forum as it is every week. So if you can't remember or you're not sure, either watch this back or go and check it out in the forum. The link will be in there with all of the freebies that uh, Debbie sent over as well. And if you do take anything away from today and use it in your work, please tag us on Instagram. Please share it with us. Yeah. Tag Debbie as well so she yeah. can check it out. And uh, thanks again, and we'll see you all same time next week. Thanks, Debbie. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. 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 Bye.